Hey, what is up guys? Lazar here with another technical tips and tricks video. This time I've got a total of nine new cool things that I want to show you that can really, really, really improve your teaching. So, let's begin. Actually, let tip number one speak for itself. I'm not really going to go into much detail. I'll just ask you, is it better when you see me like this or like this? Obviously, the difference is very, very noticeable. So, what is it that I did that made the video quality much better? Well, I'll tell you. It's this $5 LED light that has a USB port and three settings, right? It's very simple. It clips onto your laptop or your phone, if that's what you're into, and it provides about three to four hours of battery-powered light to help you with subpar lighting conditions when you might be holding a class somewhere else where the lighting just isn't cutting it. I use it every day. It helps so much, and I think that everyone should have this. Really, it clips onto your phone. It does pretty much everything you'd expect an LED light to do. It's very, very bright, and it helps the students see your face. So, tip number one, part two. This LED light can also clip onto your phone, depending on the size. I don't really like it. That way, I much more prefer to clip it somewhere else because then it obstructs a little bit of my screen. But if you have a phone that is kind of compatible with that, then by all means, do it. It's really, really cool and it really helps the students see you better. Anyways, the other thing I wanted to talk about was this tripod. So, this tripod cost me a total of $2. That's right, $2. So, this tripod is completely adjustable. The way I have it set up is so that it falls right in between the arrow key and the alt key, below the shift key, and this allows me to have all of the ports accessible on the side for my headphones, for the charger, and also the camera is positioned in a way that the students can see me and I can see them very, very clearly. This allows me to pretty much type, do all the gestures without any problem. Uh, you know, it's, it's really an invaluable tool when you're doing this sort of job. So, great, great thing. $2 only. Guys, don't skimp out on this. Like I said in the previous video, you don't want a video to be shaky just get something that'll be very stable. There's also other kinds of add-ons where you can clip your phone to the side of the laptop. That's cool too, but sometimes if you're having a bigger phone, it can be pretty bulky. I mean, this is a 13-inch MacBook Air, very old laptop, but, you know, uh, it just wouldn't hold the weight of a larger phone. I think this setup works great. The students love it. I love it. It's amazing. Tip number two, the proximity of your phone to your laptop allows you to charge your phone constantly just by having it plugged into the laptop itself. So here I have a normal regular Lightning 2 USB cord. I plug it right in here next to the SD card slot and voila, that's it. I also can use the second USB port on the other side so that I can clip this onto the uh, laptop and just charge it that way. It's simple. It's really, really simple. All right, so tip number three. If you're running the iOS version of the app, this is something that you probably don't know about. Now, the iOS version of the app is much more stable, in my opinion, than the Android version, but it also offers some things that the Android app does not. At least it didn't when I still used Android. So, this is what I'm talking about. Remember in some classes where you have the word section, you have these four little dots in the upper left 
of the of the screen and when you press them you get two or four sometimes or three new words well if there's a lot of words for instance four you can do a pinch gesture or what I prefer a double tap gesture to zoom in on the one you want the student to read the best grade exactly so it'll read it but it will also put the picture you want in focus this is especially useful when you have four pictures and you want the student to really really understand you right away which one it is that you want him to read so yeah you can pinch but double tapping works better another thing that I also like doing is drawing on the whiteboard now if your both hands are free mine isn't because I'm recording this video but if you're using the tripod like I told you you can use the whiteboard function now I'll rest my phone here on the laptop hinge just to show you how to do this so it's very very simple there's a whiteboard app pretty much on any tablet you can use it to create a new drawing right like this white sheet of paper and now you can do whatever you want four plus four equals how much you can write you can draw you can play this is really really good you can play tic-tac-toe with your students I prefer to do this with the advanced ones but uh, you know you can do it with anyone that understands and it's, it's really good you can tell your students you know where to do their next move they'll tell you uh, upper right upper right or you know name them one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and they'll say, okay, put my circle on nine, and then you do this, and then you play your other move, and it's it's so good, it teaches them logic, it's really, really good, it's something that I really suggest everyone should have, it replaces so many things at once, it's very cheap, I mean, this tablet costs like $30 on eBay, it's really, really useful, don't neglect it, okay? Tip number four. Five. Okay, so I talked about using your tablet. Sometimes tablets might not be that useful, although you can issue voice commands to the tablet to do a Google search like, hey Google, uh, search images for this and that, but that kind of ruins the whole flow of the class. So I prefer just using your laptop for this. It might get a little bit crowded, but most of the time they'll be able to see if it's a big picture. So what am I saying about images? Well, searching for images with the word Chinese at the end of it is something that helps students a lot. So for example, I'm doing a class about snacks, food, America versus China. There aren't that many Chinese snacks may be pictured in the lesson. I want to show or ask the Chinese student what snacks do they eat. So what do I search for? I go on Google Images, right? And I search for snacks plus Chinese, right? So this, right? Snacks, Chinese. And what does it show me? Well, it shows me all of the popular Chinese snacks. It's very, very simple. And what can I do? Well, if I'm using Mac OS, I can do the pinch to zoom thing and I can show them, you know, the details. See, he can make out the text, the letters, and it's just amazing, you know. It's so useful, so simple, but you know, sometimes you just don't remember these things, and that's why I'm here to show you this because it took me a long, long time to figure all of this out. This goes without saying, but always have a backup headset. Now, I'm using these earbuds because sometimes I just prefer to let my ears rest after a few hours of having classes. I have my MPOW headset right here, but I don't really like using it that much. It is a great one, but why use it if you can you know let your ears rest a little bit and this boils down to the very very simple you know uh saying of not having all your eggs in one basket now i've gotten these earbuds these ones and these ones for two dollars off of aliexpress they sound pretty great i mean you can hear me pretty nicely 
they don't really do a whole lot of noise cancellation, but honestly, for the price, if you're in a pinch, just get them. $2 for a microphone, a play stop button, compatibility with iOS, Android, pretty much anything you can think of, do it. Just do it. Okay, tip number seven. If you're working a lot, your back might start hurting. And to prevent that, you want to get a stress ball or a gym ball, as some people say it. So the concept is very simple. It's about 20 bucks, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but it, it really, really just, you know, helps a lot. If you've got a bad back, if you just want to do some very, very light exercise while teaching, this is the way to go. It's $20. Really, you can't go wrong with a stress ball. Although, I'll have a disclaimer put just in case. Uh, don't jump around too much on it. It might make some of the students a little bit nervous, nauseous. Just try to stay still, but keep your balance because it's good for your back. So, yeah, it's something that I really, really enjoy using because it makes my life a lot easier. Tip number eight. If you're like me, if you travel a lot, if you go from one place to another and you still want to have your boxfish classes, please invest in a carry case. Now, this little puppy costs four dollars, again, off of AliExpress, and it holds all of my boxfish possessions tidy in one place, my charger, two sets of cables, one is micro USB, one is lightning, uh, my phone, the stand I'm using, the LED light, everything, everything, everything just sits very nicely in this compact carrying case. Chuck it in a bag, chuck it in a backpack. It's something you need to have, really. It's four dollars. Come on. Last but not least, tip number nine. Wow. So, tip number nine, have a good profile picture. Now, profile pictures in the past, they used to cost a lot. If you wanted to get a good DSLR shot of yourself, you'd have to pay a pretty penny, go to a you know, photographer, get your picture done. It costs a lot, not only in terms of money, but also time, getting ready. It's just too complicated, but there is a solution. Most phones nowadays, and I'll actually be showing you this here in a second, have this thing called portrait mode. Now, portrait mode is a relatively new thing. I think most phones from late 2016 and onwards have it. Uh, it's basically a thing where the camera blurs the background using depth of field. I won't really get it too technical, but it makes your photos look pretty darn nice. I mean, look at this. It's, uh, it's amazing what a $150 smartphone camera can do. So my suggestion is to just go outside, take a nice picture, smile for the camera, Make sure you're using the portrait mode, and really, that's all there is to it. The photos will look very clean, very crisp. In case you don't have a phone that does portrait mode, try and have, you know, at least a friend who's good with Photoshop try to cook something up, or just use his phone if he's got a phone that supports this. Really, I think that it actually helped me get more students since I put my pictures up like this. If you found these tips to be helpful, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment below if you've got any questions about some of my equipment or anything else, really. I'm always here to answer your questions, and I will see you soon.